Yo, it's Lily. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing top 10 games that scared me as a kid. Now, I know we're younger, we get scared more easily, but I feel like these games, some of them anyway, aren't your typical one games that maybe kids should be playing and two, maybe just certain parts of a game that just people wouldn't think that are really scary or think of that particular game as horror. And now, now it's okay if these games didn't scare you, but some of these I legit couldn't finish because I was so terrified. I jump scare easily even now, so I can't even imagine how I felt when I was like, I don't know, six, seven. Please go easy on me. Number 10. Kirby the Crystal Shards. I know, I know, Kirby. Well, there was some damn creepy things in Kirby the Crystal Shards. The thing that scared me the most were those damn eyeballs that possess your friends. First Waddle Dee, then Adele, and even King Dee 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 Dee. Like damn, that shit was out to get you. With the unsettling music. How creepy your friends act and look after they get possessed was terrifying as a kid. Only because you'd expect Kirby to be wholesome and cute. And don't even get me started on that final boss. It shows up with a smiling face and then turns into this creepy eyeball. I hate it! What's with game enemy bosses and eyeballs? I'm looking at you, Capcom. What? 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 Number nine Half Life. That's right, Half-Life 1. This was one of my first PC games ever. I remember having my first PC that got handed down to us. It was a piece of crap, but it did its job with RE3, 1999, Half-Life, and a few other games. Anyways, I don't know what it is about Half-Life, but it creeped me the hell out. Firstly, that scientist motherfucker with a beard was insanely creepy and I knew some shit was about to go down. You go into this room and you analyze some alien crystal specimen thing. Nothing could go wrong, right? Wrong. The device caused chaos. Chaos. And shit starts blowing up. The dudes on the speakers are freaking out. And then you you pass out. Luckily, the suit you have on saves you, but oh, guess what? You awake to a rip in space and time where there is now these alien creatures and everyone around you is dead. So safe to say that that was my only time with Half-Life, unfortunately. Um, I would love to play it again. I just... I don't know. I, I just, I guess I haven't made time for it, but I would love to play it. Stream it, maybe? Number eight, Banjo-Kazooie. You heard me. Now, the whole game wasn't creepy. Well, I mean, Gruntilda is pretty fucking scary. Um, but there is another part that legit terrified me. And maybe it's because I had um, some trauma with drowning, or almost drowning, sorry. But yes, if you haven't guessed it already, uh, it was Snacker the Shark. If there had to be one thing I hated about Banjo-Kazooie as a kid, besides creepy old Gruntilda, was Snacker the Shark. Listen, I love Treasure Trove Cove. That level was a banger! You hear the music in there? Woo! But god damn, you fall into the water? Get ready to hear that. That's a rip. Not only that, but it it talks too. Be like, mm, lovely. Go away, snacky. Leave me alone. So hi, Alucard is here. Number seven. Super Mario 64. Now, when I say SM64, you probably think Big Boo's haunt. And you're right. But it wasn't Boo that scared me. I actually love Boo. I adore Boo. I always pick him in Mario Kart, Mario Party sometimes. But it was the piano. Anyone else? Just me? Okay. 
I know for a fact that this was part of every child's nightmares if you played SM64 as a kid. And once you reach Big Boo's haunt, well, GG. That whole level alone was insanely creepy with everything that it offered. But one thing that scared me the most? The piano! You're on a haunt for the eight red coins, and you reach this one room and, oh, a piano! You get the slightest close to it, and that thing will bite the living crap out of you. That noise it makes when it slowly tries to chase you. Luckily, it doesn't last long, but scary enough to make me never want to go in that room again. Fuck that room. Number six. The Sims. I mentioned The Sims, and if you're an avid Sim player, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. This sound. The view and how fast everything happens. Nah, dude, this is legit horror. I don't care what anyone says. You're just trying to live life in this simulator and BAM! This is a valid fear for anyone. And it happening randomly throughout the game was a legit jump scare, okay? Number five, Metal Gear Solid 2. Now, there's a lot of, um, like I mentioned, a lot of these aren't classified as horror, but some of these games have just this just out of nowhere impact that just haunts you and this is definitely one of them a hundred percent if you've played mgs2 you know exactly what i'm gonna say right, right in turn, turn the, the game, game console, console off, off right, right now. now yo this scene was so goddamn iconic and i think even people who haven't played the mgs series knows about this this has got to be the scariest thing ever in any metal gear game the colonel just casually breaking the fourth wall and talking to the player. The mission is a failure. Cut the power right now. What's wrong with you? Don't worry, it's a game. It's a game just like usual. And Rose too, just saying, You'll ruin your eyes playing so close to the TV. What are you talking about? I remember me and my brother sitting on the floor closely near the TV and turning to each other like, what the hell did we just hear? The music as well during this segment was just so eerie. Along with the colonel's babbles. I hear it's amazing when the famous purple stuffed worm in Flapjaw space with the tuning fork does a raw blink on Harry Carey Rock. I need scissors. 61 and just seeing the most random and creepy things. I mean, I was just watching my brother play Metal Gear Solid 2 at the time when it first came out, and even I was terrified. And then once I got a chance to play the game for myself, I, I think I legit turned off the console and I was like, um, that's enough for me today. Number four, Castlevania 64. Ah, Castlevania. Uh, this one in particular, I know a lot of people don't like or don't care for, but it was one of the first 3D Castlevania games and I, I enjoyed it for what it was. It was janky, platforming was kind of not that great but it had a lot of cool things the music was cool the boss fights were great the characters were awesome i loved carrie and i loved reinhardt but there was something in this game that almost always every time i started it over i just could not do it and when i did i would have to pause the game quite a bit not only do I hate mazes, but this maze in particular was the worst. You're chasing a kid called Malice in this maze, screaming, Help me! And naturally, you're gonna want to help. This part had the scariest music. Dogs growling, chasing out to take a chomp. And worst of all, the chainsaw guy. Every footstep sounds like a mechanical Frankenstein. It's easy to get lost here, so imagine every corner you turn, you're just clenching in case he shows up. This is where I almost always turned off the console as a kid. Absolutely dreaded it. Ah, uh, sorry for this upcoming part. I just checked the footage and I saw that I had Echo on after I already recorded that whole part, so... Sorry. Number three, Diddy Kong Racing. I don't know, I feel like some things on this list, people will just be like, are you serious? Like, anyways, the whole game wasn't scary, clearly. Um, 
but it did have one character in particular that every time I saw him on the screen, I just wanted to turn it off. And that was Wizpig. If you don't know Wizpig, good. You don't wanna. I think he's quite possibly the scariest I've come across in any Nintendo game. Wizpig wanted to cause chaos. Chaos. And conquer other inhabited planets. Hell, at the very start of the game, they show him right away. In the intro cutscene, when you turn on the N64, and when you start the story, you see this big old head as a statue in this main area of a world to scare you every time you travel around. I think the part that scared me the most is when you're done collecting all the amulet pieces to open up Wispick's statue. That scene is so goddamn scary as it zooms up to him. Ah. And when you actually do raise him, his footsteps are so loud, creating a lot of anxiety. The whole level itself, while it's raining, having his track play and him laughing, it's just a recipe for nightmares. For me, I don't know, for me. Oh my god, and don't get me started on this scene too, where he's peeking out the corner, uh, or peeking from the lighthouse. I hate it. Number two. Resident Evil 4. Now, it's no secret that Resident Evil can be scary, especially in the trilogy, you know, with the fixed camera angles and everything. But in Resident Evil 4, you know, a, there was a lot of scary things. You know, Salvador, Mendez, Ganados, Del Lago, uh, El Gigante. You could go on and on. You could pretty much name the, the, the whole enemies. Krauser. Well... Krauser. I mean, he wasn't that scary. Anyway, the most scary for me was the Regenerators. Oh god, not these guys. In Chapter 5, 1 of Resident Evil 4 OG, there were these Plaga-based B.O.W.s called Regenerators, known to regrow big portions of their body if shot or destroyed. They do have these easy weak points you can shoot with a rifle and a special scope, but when you're me and you hear them breathing heavy and slowly taking steps towards you... <laughs> fuck that. They're spiky, they're ugly, their noises are nasty, and they sucked to fight. The only good thing I'd say about them is, damn that ass! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. As a kid, right when I got up to this chapter, I saved and quit. I continued later on, but I would always get overwhelmed and way too scared. I think I would even mute the TV so I wouldn't have to hear them. <laughs> They're the star of this chapter to make you shit yourself, so be ready. Number one. We the ones! Now this may not surprise you, but another Resident Evil game. Resident Evil 3. Nemesis. Nemesis, I guess you take the trophy. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, a survival horror that naturally reeks of spooky. I already am terrified of being chased in real life. And in this game, it proved to me that I also had the fear with video games too. Nemesis is a tyrant pursuer that is very intelligent, fast, and really wants stars members. Throughout the game, this monster will stop at nothing to make sure Jill Valentine is dead. You first encounter him as you're approaching the RPD. You see him brutally tear Brad a new one. Is this where I stopped playing? Surprisingly, no. No. As RE3 Nemesis had a life selection feature where you can choose whether to fight the monster or flee into the RPD. I, of course, chose to flee. If you do, you'll hear him banging at the front door. creating a great suspense and fear whether if he's gonna break through or not. Spoilers, he doesn't. 
for now. Instead, you make your way around the RPD, finding items, and even the star's office so you can pick up a new weapon and your trusty lockpick. As you're making your way to leave the RPD, the scariest scene when I was a kid happens. Yes, that. Stars. Stars. I know it's maybe nothing now, but as a kid, I wanted to not even look at the game. I first played Resident Evil 3 Nemesis on PC, and I still have my copy from when I was a kid. This is one of the most beat up games I own, and I do not want to show you the back because it is so scratched. I treasure this game so much hey want to call the capcom hint line surprisingly i didn't though it would have been cool to see like what hints and what information they could give you about certain things if you ever called a hotline or a tip line to help you with a game leave a comment down below and let me know um any stories or your experience with that anyways capcom did an amazing job making this fucker really scary. And to this day, his jump scares, music, and all his terrifying evolutions are one of the best. Thanks for watching. This is actually my first time, I believe, making these, this type of video. So if you enjoyed it, please feel free to like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Do you like this style of content? Would you like to see more like top 10s, top 5s, top 20s? Also, what was your uh, scariest game as a kid? Leave it down below in the comments. I would like to know it was a similar to mine. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Feel free to check out all my other videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.